The two be buff champions for July have been revealed. The voting controversy, Kabam ratio, the criticism, Summoner Showdown 2021 limits are continuing, and Spider Gwen goes mega low in arena. Yes, indeed, it's the start of another week, and we've got lots of topics to go over, lots of things dropping in the community, little things here or there, surprises, and all that stuff. So make sure you support this video by hitting the like button and as well subscribing with post notifications on. Also, when I post content, you get to see it firsthand. And just finally, I've got to give a bit of thanks. Thank you to those that support the channel as a YouTube member, and also those that support on Patreon. You're on screen now. Thank you so much for continuing the love and the support. And also for those that support over on twitch.tv slash richthemanlive. That's why I do all of my live streaming. So here's the thing. It's Prime Day today. So if you want to give your free Amazon Prime Twitch sub, you can do that. I'll be live streaming tonight. And as well, those that give tier one subs, gifted subs, bits and donations. Thank you so much for the support and keeping the channel going. So first of all, I saw this on Twitter. Rob Von Chu posted it and I'm like, oh no. Even though this is like, it's completely fake. It was just interesting to know where this has been circled around too, because you know any, anything goes around this community. We're like, oh, seven star Angela, yeah, fun times. Uh, so yeah, if you see anything like this stuff, it, it is fake. You know, we've still got to get relics out the way first of the new kind of extension from things that are like six star. Like, are we going seven stars? No, we're going relics. And I expect info to drop about relics in the next uh, couple of months. So, uh, yay us. And now we must move on to more spicier topics. And the Ant-Man Guillotine Summoner's Choice Vote. Controversy? Backlash? Situation? Whatever you want to call it. It is definitely interesting to know where people like when it comes to, uh, you know, is this is this, is this conspiracy? Is it a case gear team one? Is it is, are this other stuff going on? At the end of the day, right, there's some massive revelations from this, so we're gonna deep dive it. So if you don't know already, gear team one, the popular vote, or the vote via the arena-based system. If you're talking about the popular vote, you could say that the forum-based vote definitely puts some kind of uh, divide between who people were commonly voting for, but also leaving out that the ones that lost, the champions that people voted for that lost, may have decided to reinvest their vote into Guillotine over Ant-Man. Which is the thought process that we put in on Friday's Marvel Contest of Champions news that yes, like, because, you know, the people that voted for Thor, Jane Foster, Miss Marvel, Joe Fixie, and Agent Venom could decide to reinvest their vote into something like Guillotine for example. And that's the thing, with the in-game voting system allowing you more votes, it could be in a case that that just uh, multiplied and amplified. And as well, there's a contingent of the community that does not have any interest with the forums. Now I get the people will be frustrated and annoyed with the situation because they may feel that Atman is, on the face of it, a definite worse champion than Guillotine under the current situation, the meta, whatever you want to describe the uh, champion's effectiveness and synergies can make Guillotine a more effective champion. So there must be some upside to this. And one of those upsides is uh, Kaban Mike responding to say that, remember that just because he didn't win, so Aman didn't win, doesn't mean he's off the buff list or anything. He just didn't get the full buff spot. We'll still plan to update all the champions on that list. And that's something to bear in mind. He will be on that list, whether or not he'll be this year or next year. And with the buff champions that are coming in July, it does give me hope that there could be a little window of opportunity for him to squeeze in this year. But definitely, I would say he's got to be done next year. And that's the thing. This gear team buff will largely come in in either October or November. Those are the two kind of like times I'd, I kind of go, okay, that's kind of full time, really. You could say that it would, then it kind of goes into winter, September time. Yeah, I don't know. Movies start kicking back into action. And I would probably say that two villains or, or one villain and one of the characters associated with Shang-Chi will probably be in um, for September. But that's just me theorizing and speculating. But I did talk about the idea of a revelation. What is this big revelation? Well, Kaban Mike put a day later, so June 17th, now it's June 18th, said that Atman won the forum vote by about 1,700 votes. Getting won the arena ballot by about 75,000 votes. The margin there is over seven times the number of votes are in the poll combined. There are a lot more people that voted in game versus those who voted on the forums. And it's important to remember that no online community is ever really fully representative 
of the collective community. That's true because it's going to be people that don't watch YouTube or they don't want, don't go to the forums or they don't don't want to go to Reddit. You know, there's going to be that that type of people. Even people that wouldn't have seen the Twitter announcement about the the buffs that are coming in. So people, you know, may have like unable to see that social side. And then this revelation here. If that were the case, I'm pretty sure that a mega sentinel would have beat Hercules based on all the polls, posts, and videos you all made. I see. I don't know if that's a slight dig or it's because they didn't run the arena system uh, for that. So yeah, I um, I don't know if that's, that's the case. But to give you a real idea of like this margin of seventy-five thousand, if we take and put in seventy-five thousand and then divide it by the six votes that you are able to do. It comes up with 12,500. So there could be out there 12,500 players that did, again, just theorizing, got the six arena tickets, so they did that arena, and that's 12,500 people that voted differently to Ant Man being the one that would be buffed. That's a massive swing, especially if you compare with what went on with the forum. So, yeah, um, that's the release numbers right there, the difference, it's crazy. And in a nutshell, I think Kaban Mike in this response literally just ratioed the people that were being like criticizing this particular situation. But it's informative and it's good to know that there's some some facts to this and you know, this it's like releasing the Snyder Cut, but in MTOC, releasing the, the, the vote info, so to speak, so yeah. Um, not good for those to vote for Ant-Man, but at least we're getting a buff to a champion that if you pull her, at least to say she'll be maybe rocking in your roster a little bit more frequently and wouldn't require synergy. So, uh, got to take some positives and hopefully Ant-Man is buffed in the next, uh, by this year or next year. Right, let's talk about Summoner Showdown. There's a lot more to unpack with this and I'll try and do this in a more timely fashion because these are the bosses that you're going to be seeing. You're going to see your Nameless King Groot, your Nameless Scarlet Witch Classic, and your Nameless Hyperion that's going to be full of Nameless Champions. The narrative of things seem to be this summer is that things are restrictive. The Summoner Showdown 2021 is all about Thronebreakers, not necessarily a good thing and not necessarily a bad thing. This summer has been a case of like, there's been lots available for those at Thronebreaker, a small amount for those at Cavalier, and nothing extra for those that are uncollected. Maybe you could see that as a problem. Maybe you can see that as a chase situation. Kabama trying to get players to up their ante and go further and further to be the uh, the kind of the quintessential class or quintessential titleage, uh, which is Thronebreaker at the time. Now, last year, very different to how it is this year. It seems that by being Thronebreaker, there's this kind of push to say, right, well, you've got five-star champions and as well, you've got a diverse roster to take on some of the bosses that are coming, which indeed is Nameless King Groot and Nameless Hyperion and uh, Scarlet Witch. But that's really um, a frustrating thing. It's more so frustrating because you get 35 chances to fight. And after that, no more opportunity. So if you mess up, like, I don't know, 10 times then you've got to be very careful for your further 25 times not that i think there's going to be a lot of players messing up so much that they're going to need 35 attempts but at the same time for the idea of competitiveness this is going to be crunch time down to the wire if you are looking to be one of those um masteries and suicides character uh, person and then trying to do this then it's going to be a very um very kind of competitive and uh, highly fought contest to try and get yourself in the semi-finals and finals respectively. Now Kabam aren't completely anti-lower progression levels because they are opening it up this time for players that are lower to participate in the silver and bronze difficulties, which if you've got four stars and three stars, you do four stars and the silver, three stars and the bronze respectively. And are there any rewards? There's the profile picture. So, you know, you get a profile picture, bit of fun, you know. There's some pretty cool rewards for you if you are a semi-finalist with you getting to choose your six-star champion. So if your elusive Doctor Doom is out there, uh, Aegon, Shang-Chi, whatever, you know, you get to choose it, which is amazing. So yeah, you get a six-star generic rank-up gem, a Summoner Showdown t-shirt, and video equipment for filming. How nice! But I think the big thing, the same thing it was last year, is all about which country can participate in this. And that is the, the biggest problem right here is that it's not open to everybody. Now, last year, it wasn't 100% explained as to the ruling as to why certain countries aren't able to participate. I mean, look, right off the bat here, even uh, in the Americas, Quebec cannot 
play this this it's sort of like Quebec, um, which I think is like a Canadian province, I want to say, um, like or like whatever it is in in can't can't participate. Hawaii and Alaska can't in the Americas. There must be some legal precedent in place that allows this not to be um, a possibility based on either rewards that uh, have to be given because it's a physical part. I don't know. Like I'm not I'm not in the legal system for for those those kind of like provinces, countries, whatever. And also the same thing when it comes to you know what I'm seeing here, like no India, no Pakistan. And uh, various other ones not able to um, participate in Asia and Oceania. So that creates, again, more further problems uh, to this. There must be something in place, a legal president, that uh, is restricting this. And this will be an ongoing thing. But, uh, yeah, sad, sad times that players from the extent of the community aren't able to participate in this. Yeah, and Kabam's only kind of like further response to this is that due to competition laws and shipping feasibility in certain regions, some countries are not able to compete in the gold difficulty. So I don't know what that means, but um, yeah, so there must be something with laws and as well shipping reasons. There's also the problem with the age thing to complete in the summoner showdown enter the gold difficulty you must be above the age of majority in your place of residence this is something that has restricted metal sonic dude participating last year i don't know whether or not this will be something uh, this year that will be restrictive i mean every every year older he gets like it's it's, it's like is he getting close to being and, and like you know fighting for his summoner showdown um or kind of like at least participating in a tournament like this you can learn more about the summoner showdown 2021 by hitting up the link in the description down below and you should like take into consideration what command Mika has to say because he's looking at you with the evil eyes like he's looks into your soul and kind of like ratios you you know now on to another spicy news topic and that is Bishop Diablo and Ronin are getting buffed up this is great news but also comes a bit of a shock I think for a lot of players it's hard to know which one is going to get what. Now, look, let's face it. Diablo is complete trash and needs to be the complete overhaul, the rework. Everything needs to be put into changing that character around so that uh, players can enjoy him. I've got a six-star version, and I'd be really happy to see that. I've got Bishop as well. And that's the thing with Bishop. Whether or not well, Bishop and Ronin as well. Ronin's a big surprise. Which one's going to get a tune-up or a, a kind of like improvement of stats? It's going to be difficult to, to kind of put one against the other because one will need a tune-up, one will need an overhaul, one is going to need a complete rework. It's it's tough to figure out who's going to get it. But Bishop from the top end of damage, and he does great damage by the way. It's just a case of going like, Rob, well, what else can Command give him in order to really take home, maximize and improve the damage rate that he can do and as well be more of a viable team addition but you know he does have his usage i'm not gonna say he's, he's completely bad and ronin is a big surprise a lot of stuff that character does so it's gonna be like all right well what do we do do we add some more stats numbers and things so he's able to output a bit more damage so yeah this is pretty exciting news pretty good news and we're waiting for more info which will probably drop towards the end of this week or at least going into early next week and now on to the final thing to cover and that is got to be the arena predictions and results so make sure to tune back to marvel true costs link is always in the description later on today for the full results but let's go over the things that players have very kindly posted in the rich the man discord under arena results uh, shout out to everybody that's posted in there. You're on screen now. Cheers for that. And let's go over the results and as well predictions. All predictions for round two are down below. And I will kind of like talk about why I've done this uh, here with like round two down here. And as to like, you know, how that how the results impact on creating a round two prediction. So the information we have at the moment is no six star symbiote Spider-Man, a uh, symbiote Supreme, sorry. But we do have the info when it comes to what is position 101. So we know how much more points to put in. So for Symbiote Supreme, we've got 70.5 um, mil was a position 101. That got the five star. So you're going to be wanting to put a lot more into uh, to getting past 70.5 mil. 69.78 mil got a 103 position. So again, you're seeing like the close to like that 101. 30.5. Got position 352, which again is going lower down that spectrum. But again, is incredibly important to figure out where you kind of like put in your scores for, for round two if you are going for Symbiote Supreme as a, as a five star. Some of the trials, I mean, it's there. I, I don't really kind of cover it too much, but I'll try and do that as, as much as I start going into that arena. Spider Gwen is a massive revelation because she dropped a lot lower as a six star, like incredibly low. I'm talking like 36.8 mil got position 66. 
but 32 mil got position 92. So that gives you a real idea of the extent of grind to what you take home. So, man, very, very important. But at the same time, I'm, I am, I've got a bit of a fear factor with this that a lot of players may then kind of look at this and go, oh, round two is my time and opportunity to go in and I'll put in 40 mil and get, get a good position. I've got this feeling that's why I've put round two as 50 mil just to be safe then sorry. 7 mil was enough for 6 to 10% position, and that's why all my predictions for round two are as follows. That for six for 80 mil, Symbiote Supreme, 6 star. Symbiote Supreme, 5 star, 35 mil. Again, I just think those are kind of like good and adequate scores to get yourself the, the bag. Spider Gwen, 6 star, 50 mil. Spider Gwen, 5 star, 30 mil. Again, I think that's absolutely fine. If you follow my prediction for round one, you've probably got yourself the bag, so uh, congrats. And we'll see how round two kind of goes down. Uh, but yeah, those might my, my, be my predictions and results for the Symbiote Supreme and the Spider-Gwen Arena. And there we go, that has concluded Marvel Contest of Champions news show for Monday. Thank you very much for watching and check out some other content posted up there. And I'll see you all very soon. Have a good one. Bye-bye.